The article title is provocative. The man who discovered Susana Martinez could also be her downfall. The piece in the National Journal examines the role of Jay McCluskey. Now, he is the political advisor to Ms. Martinez, and it questions whether his role is too large and if the governor relies too much on his judgment. Administration officials slammed the piece, but it has fostered plenty of political chatter locally as we head into an election year. So joining us to talk about this and other news of the week is one of our line regulars here from the snow of Santa Fe, Rob Nicoleski, the New Mexico watchdog. Another regular, Tom Garrity, rocking the bow tie from the Garrity Group. He's here. Returning to the table this week, our regular Laura Sanchez, CEO of the New Mexico Chamber of Green Chamber of Commerce, and also returning after a much too long hiatus, our good friend Marisa DeMarco, co-founder of the New Mexico Compass. Tom, this piece highlights many things uh, could be reasonably uh, said, people talk about around here, but a national piece puts a different hue on everything. Mm -hmm. So let me start with this, on that different hue idea. Her national aspirations, if there are to be any, what does a national piece like this National Journal piece do to it? Those kind of aspirations. It almost becomes a, you know, a, 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 a record, if yeah. you will, to say, okay, let's get you know, as much of the stuff out there through third party as, as much as possible, so that way we just put it on the record so people say, here it is. And so it's, it's, it's a good fodder for other investigative journalists or other bloggers and tweeters and things right. of that nature. Sure. And Marisa, you know, one of the questions that's come up is, um, I think Joe Monahan might have, might have posed this too, is these stories could have been dug up locally, but yeah. they weren't. You that know was, what I mean? And why is actually that? actually one of the first things that I thought about is beat reporters who are covering the Susana Martinez administration. This is not a new assertion in New Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder a little bit about why we didn't have this story locally. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think, you know, the, the question about whether or not it's a fair mm -hmm. critique of the mm -hmm. tenor of her administration really brings up for me the idea that her administration is often not very readily accessible to the press. Mm -hmm. And so we can't quite um, get a sense of maybe whether or not this has been a fair characterization of her administration because mm -hmm. we're not able to ask questions about, you know, um, kind of run-of-the-mill issues, never mind about the overall kind of behind-the-scenes machinations of yeah. her administration. That's fair enough. That's a good point. Laura, you know, one of the things we'll circle back to as well <clears throat> is on the pushback from the administration, we've had some incendiary words as well, sexist, racist, uh, a couple of others in there. You know, it's fair for the administration to push back. Nobody would fault them for doing this. But th is that the right tone? It, was it racist in your view? Was it sexist in your view? H how did that tone of it come across now that you're appropriately responding to it? Um, you know, obviously I've dealt with sexism and racism. Sure. I think we all, we all have encountered that um, mm -hmm. at some point. Um, it didn't strike me as sexist and racist. Mm -hmm. It struck me as, uh, you know, as definitely painting a picture of the kind of ties that are um, infiltrating her administration. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that there's a close-knit group of people mm -hmm. on the fourth floor, her closest staff that all have ties back to McCluskey in mm -hmm. some way, that was um, that was kind of you know the interesting part for me is just that back-channel mm -hmm. communication and all that. Um, it didn't strike me as sexist or racist. I think that you know, but obviously you know I'm not in her position, sure. and I think that's a very um, subjective. Yep perspective to have. And that's fair enough. I think any of us can connect to that. It's, it's your own point of view counts right. rather than somebody else's. Rob, to the point, and the point was Jay McCleskey mm -hmm. and his power uh, in this administration. A fair portrayal, is this something that is going to dog this administration, again, on the national front down the road possibly? Is it, was it fair, first of all, in, in, in your gut? Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Uh, to me, I, th I thought what made the story noteworthy was the fact that you got people to go on the record, and this goes back to what you were talking about earlier about the the, uh, the, the, the statewide media not following up on this. Well, we mm -hmm. have in many ways. For example, the the, the, the uh, Angie Spears race with Pat Woods and the the, the, mm -hmm. uh, the the fight within the Republican Party there, but many times, and speaking from my experience, and I think also some of my colleagues, uh, you would talk to a number of Republicans, they wouldn't want to go on the record. Right. What made this story noteworthy was someone like Harvey Yates, right. who's very well known, wealthy, uh, Explain who he is. oil He's, man from, yeah. uh, from southern New Mexico, mm -hmm. very active in the Republican Party, used to be the Republican Party chairman. Mm -hmm. The fact that Harvey went on the record, talked to this reporter, and explained these, and, and, and uh, had, had his complaints. I think that's what made this story noteworthy. But the fact that that uh, the debate over how much influence uh, Jay McCleskey has or doesn't have, that's mm -hmm. been something that's been written about sure. and talked about. You know, I'm, even on, on this program, Absolutely. and Matt Grubbs used to be here, mm -hmm. was he mm -hmm. talked to, to Jay. I've talked to Jay a number of times about this as well. And they, the response has been the same. Right. But the, the point I would make, though, 
throughout this whole thing, and it makes for a lot of good political fodder, and there's nothing wrong with that. But the point that I would make is that every politician has a Jay McCleskey type, whether it's James Carville with Bill Clinton mm -hmm. or David Axelrod with Barack Obama. Bill Richardson had his version. Right, here, everyone, sure. everyone's mm -hmm. got their, and, and that's mm -hmm. what a, a, a political strategist is supposed to, is supposed to do, mm -hmm. to, to tell the candidate, tell the public official, okay, this is what we think will work in a real politique sort of way. Sure. It's up to you, it is up to the candidate or the public official to make that choice. Mm -hmm. And whether you can say, it, 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 it's a chicken and the egg thing to say, well, Jay's got too much influence over the, over the governor. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, though, whatever political strategist uh, has, uh, has any kind of relationship with their candidate or public official, it's that public official who ultimately has the That's hammer. Right. That's right. So if you don't like Jay McCleskey's influence or supposed mm -hmm. influence on the governor, it ultimately is the governor's call, That's not right. Jay's. That's right. To, uh, Interesting point to me in the article, you know, I agree with Rob and Marisa, there's been coverage of Jay and Susanna and all these kind of things. The $850,000 this man has earned in about two and some years is extraordinary to me on, from a New Mexico basis. That's extraordinary. It's good for, work. It's, it's, I mean, it's for good work one get person, it. yeah. mm -hmm. I mean, getting 13 grand a month from one place, 10 grand a month from another place, Taking up almost all the money from the Angie Spears race, right? Almost like less than ten thousand was yeah. left. From Although the total, it's not taxpayer you know. dollars, it's campaign money. Right. But is, is that is that, you know, <laughs> how does that make people supposed to feel about Jay McCleskey when you can clean eight hundred fifty thousand dollars off the table in two years? It's it's amazing. Well, I mean, it, it is a sign of economic development. I mean, you know, tongue in cheek, you know. <laughs> seriously. But, but in all in all seriousness, good one. Though, good one. What, we, what we need to take a look at is, is that. The normal person will not be able to really connect with, you know, whoever is governor, whoever the governor's staff is. Sure. I mean, this is a whole different, you know, stratosphere of mm -hmm. political strategy and discussion and asking the regular New Mexico resident to try and connect with somebody like Jay, Jay McCleskey or, um, or any, any other political operative, sure. I don't think is, is realistic. I mean, you know, he's, he has a, he has a price as far as what his uh, consulting fees are and he gets a, mm -hmm. he gets paid for it but money Question is, is but what that gets him. that's right I was about to say money is power yeah. is yeah, it though money is power Marisa exactly right so but, so he's bigger in fact I think than a lot of folks might even give him credit for right if, if, if you know what I mean because money behind you has I, a think different the, power. I think the pay issue really brings up a lot of the conversation that's been happening the last several years about campaign finance reform right. about super PACs about how much money is spent on political races and when we say that that money is being spent on political races, it's going somewhere. Right. It's going to Jay McCluskey. It's going to other people like Jay McCluskey. Yeah. That's how those campaign dollars and these very, very expensive races um, get spent. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, it brings up a larger point about um, the, the financing of races in, in sure. politics. Sure. And on that note, you know, you've been around politics a long time. You've known the Jay McCluskeys of the world. Everybody has them. You know, there's, you know, gunslingers out there. But $850,000. Uh, the market could bear it, obviously. You know what I mean? He's not stealing it. However, what does that do? Uh, it's, it's something, there well, has to be some impact to that. <clears throat> sure. And I think it, uh, you know, it's just, it's a daunting number for mm -hmm. the average New Mexican. I mean, and one of the distressing things for me is when you think about how much a person in that kind of position, um, and whether the market bears that or not, but for him, mm -hmm. obviously, it does, mm -hmm. um, can make that kind of money. And we're not even connecting education necessarily to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, as somebody who has three degrees and <clears throat> could never even dream of making that kind of money in New Mexico right. at the legal work that I do, um, is uh, you know it's just shocking. And so, what what does that mm -hmm. communicate to the average New Mexican? Right. Does it make sense for you to spend you know eight years getting degrees or just spend eight years doing politics? Right. Because right. that seems to be a much you know sure. much more stable road for some mm -hmm. people but I think um, you know it is shocking to the average person and mm -hmm. you have to just take a step back and think about well who who is advising the governor mm -hmm. and I, I agree that every every governor every politician has somebody like this I think in this situation um, Jay McCleskey has you know the governor has a, a problem in terms of being eclipsed by Jay McCleskey to mm -hmm. a certain extent her mm -hmm. administration is you know, could potentially be eclipsed because he has so much pull and so much power in so many different areas mm -hmm. of the state. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that criticism is naturally there because there's nothing, um, you know, they're, they're not putting forth anything different. Sure, sure. You know, we're about a minute out, Rob. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me, if I step back from this and I'm the Marti I'm in the Martinez administration, actually when I settle down with this, I'm, I'm feeling like I just got a huge break. And I'll tell you exactly why. 
It seems to me the governor has, a, has allowed a void, and that's why this you know, whole McCluskey thing has happened. There's a void. Mm -hmm. And now she understands, it would seem to me, that she needs to step into that void and start being a politician at this point. Start saying what she believes in, start talking about what she believes in, and stop letting others you yeah, know, but, dictate the thing. But, uh, but, but I think on, they, on my point, though, is there, is there a void? I mean, is, there, is, is she allowing this man to be that voice because she's not saying things that she should be saying? I don't know if I'd agree with the idea of, of a void because what has been some of the major criticism of this governor? That she's too strident, that she, mm -hmm. you know, uh, throws too many, issues, yep. too many sharp elbows. Mm -hmm. So if, they're, if, 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 if you're going to criticize her for, for being too strident, I, I don't know how you could say that there, there's a void there. Right. So, right. I, I mean, the, uh, as I said before, it's, it's almost an unknowable to mm -hmm. know how much influence uh, Jay McCleskey has. But if he does have a lot of influence, right. it's there because the candidate or the public official wants him to. Let me, go ahead, please. Oh, I was just please. gonna say, you know, on the issue of a void, um, one thing that you said is that, you know, she needs to step up as a politician. I actually think that she's been doing a great job as a politician. Okay. Um, the political aspect of it is fine. What she needs to step up as is as a leader, uh, an actual governor, somebody who's part of the administration and is able to understand what the needs of the administration are. Right. One of the things that she actually has been, you know, from the Republican side getting a lot of praise for is shrinking the state budget. Right. However, that comes at a cost because that really has turned into um, not filling certain state jobs. So a lot of jobs have, have gone unfilled. People have not moved into some of those positions. And I think as a result, we've had a shortage of services sure. in state government. Sure. Is she going to, do you anticipate any changes in the relationship after this? Or just one of those things that dies down and oh, no, Politico is squawk service, about it. But, but yeah. you know, whatever has happened in the past will continue. Sure. I don't see, this article isn't one of those that changes those types gotcha. of things. What I thought was interesting is the article talked about immigration. And of course this week, yeah. uh, the governor's office announced that, you know, yes indeed, driver's license reform is back on the table. Right. And having worked with Somos and Pueblo Unido in the past on this particular issue for two sessions, I, I know that it's, you know, this is one of the recurring issues that mm -hmm. we're going to see over and over again. Mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. um, so we see a lot of the old issues that have been, you know, signature items for her in the past coming sure. back uh, to live again. So sure. I don't know if that's Jay McCleskey. Right. I don't know if it's Governor Martinez, but we know it's her playbook and her playbook is not changing. Well said. In a moment, we're back with an in-depth interview with Senator Martin Heinrich.